Hey everybody, in this video we're going to cover how to use the remote SSH extension for VS Code. So what this extension allows you to do is it allows you to SSH to a remote host from within VS Code, and then after you do that, you're actually given the full functionality of VS Code on the remote device. So it's really handy for anything development re related. Uh, before we get started though, if you're doing this from Windows, just make sure you have Git for Windows installed. Uh, this is for a couple of reasons. One, um, Git comes with an SSH program that we can use. And then second, it also comes with Git bash, which we're going to use to run some Linux based commands later on. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and open VS Code and then go to the extensions marketplace by hitting this tab off to the left. It kind of looks like a few squares with one escaping. Then after you hit that, go ahead and type in remote SSH in the search bar up top, and then look for the option that's created by Microsoft. And then go ahead and install it. Um, once you've installed it, you should see a small green box pop up. I already installed it, so I already had it there, but for you, it should just pop up. This is our connect to host button, basically. So go ahead and ignore these first options, these are actually for a different extension called Remote WSL, but the Remote SSH extension has these options. Uh, connect to host. So this is what we'd hit to connect to a host. And now this option is going to open a whole new VS Code window. So if we don't want to do that, we can just hit the second option to connect the current window to a host. And then lastly, if we map the extension to a, an SSH, SSH configuration file, we can open it and edit it right here. So first off, before we start connecting to anything, let's go ahead and configure a couple settings. So we're gonna open the settings. Uh, well, actually we'll open the command palette for VS Code with Control Shift P, and then type in remote SSH colon settings, like so. And so the first setting we wanna configure is the config file setting. So this is gonna be a path to an SSH config file. Um, normally your config file should live within a directory called .ssh, and it should be within your user's home directory. And this convention goes for, for Windows and Linux. Um, in this case, if you don't already have a .ssh directory or a config file within that directory, I'll go ahead and show you how to make it. So. What I like to do is just open a git bash terminal. So if I already have one open, but if you want to open it, just hit the windows key, git space bash. It doesn't really matter where we're at. Uh, when we first open it, git bash will be operating from our home directory. And we can tell that because of the tilde at the end of the prompt. So the first thing let's do, first thing we'll do is uh, I'll just do an ll a and uh, we have some directories with a dot in front of it. But we don't have .ssh. So you could manually make it with a make dirt command, or you could also just SSH into any room, any machine, and it will automatically create it for you. So uh, we'll just say root at, uh, this is one of my VMs. We'll go ahead and connect to it. Then we'll just exit out. And now if I do an LL-A, at the top, we have a new .ssh directory. Now I can just CD into it, and I can say touch config. And that's all we need to do. Um, we just have to specify the path to that file. Uh, you could make that configuration file anywhere on your machine, but the open SSH standard is that .ssh folder in your home directory. So. Anyways, with that done, we've mapped to our configuration file. And anyways, the whole reason we do that is because later on when we connect to hosts, we can save like the username that we want to connect to along with like the device's host name, IP address, and save it in that configuration file for later. Anyway, so that's the first setting. Now for the second setting, we're just going to map to the SSH executable. Now, the setting you're looking for is called path. Now this where it's at depends on how you installed Git. Now it could be in a couple different locations. If you did a global installation of Git for Windows, it's gonna be underneath program files, Git, and then user bin 
SSH. Now SSH is the actual executable file. If you did a user local installation, it's going to be users, your username, app data, local programs, and then git, and then user bin SSH, just like above. Um, so all we're doing is just specifying the path to our SSH program. In this case, I have a global installation, so I use the program files directory. Um, but with that, that should be all that we need. So let's go ahead and connect to a host. So we'll just say root at, and we'll use the IP address. Um, actually, instead of doing that, let's go ahead and add a new host. So before I did that, you see this first option. Uh, we can just hit that, and then we can enter an SSH command. So we'll say SSH root at that IP address, just like before. And then what it's actually going to do is it's going to ask you which configuration file you want to add this host to. So we'll just say the one that we just mapped to right there. And it says host added. And now we could open the config file if we wanted to, or we can just go ahead and connect, which I'll go ahead and do. Um, and it's already done for this server, but what VS Code will actually do is it will actually install VS Code server on that remote machine. Um, and that's, what's, that's what gives you all the functionality. So anyway, go ahead and enter your password in the prompt up above. And now I am SSH'd into that Linux box. So we have um, the little information in the bottom left. We have a bash terminal open for us. And then if we wanted to, we can go ahead and open a folder. Again, we have all the same functionality we would normally have in VS Code. Additionally, we can even install extensions on the remote machine. Let me escape out of that. Um, so if we want to install like Thunder Client, for example, on this Linux box, we could do that and uh, hit that install in SSH option. And now this Linux box has Thunder Client. Um, so it's pretty handy. Um, but one thing you might notice is that anytime we open a folder, it's gonna prompt us for a password again, which can get kind of annoying. Especially if we're just adding a folder to our workspace, doesn't really make any sense. So what we can do is on our local Windows machine, we can actually generate an SSH key pair and then add our public key to the remote server. And so it recognizes us and we won't have to enter our password every time. So first off, back on your local machine, back in your git bash terminal, Make sure you're within that .ssh folder, and then we're going to use a command to generate some SSH keys. So we're just going to say ssh-keygen-trsa, and then dash b4096. So this will create some RSA keys with a length of uh, 4096. Now by default, it's going to put it in your user's dot ssh folder and the private key is going to be called id underscore rsa we won't enter a passphrase and now if we do an ll dash a we can see that our id rsa which is our private key and then we can also see the corresponding public key that was created for us so what we're going to do is we can use a command called ssh i think it's believe uh copy dash ID, then dash I, and then we're going to specify the path to our public key file. So we're in the same directory, uh, which means we can just say ID underscore RSA dot pub. And then we need to specify the remote host that we're going to copy our public key to and the user on that remote machine. So we're going to say root at and then that VM's IP address. Oh, there we go. All right, so it worked. We'll enter the root password for that VM. Cool, so it says number of keys added. Now try logging into the machine with SSH root at blah, 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 and make sure that uh, only the keys you want were added. So um, if we go back to our VS Code window that's actually SSH into that VM, if we go into a terminal, I'll show you what that SSH copy ID command actually did because you don't have to run that command. 
You can do it manually if you want to. So on my VM, if I go to my home directory by typing CD, then go into my .ssh folder, if I look in there, the only file on this VM is a file called authorized keys. And if we cat it out, this is actually the public key that we just generated on, uh, on my Windows machine. All, right? all it really did was copy my public key to this authorized keys file. So you can run that command if you want. Um, or you can just SSH into the VM and manually add your public key to the authorized keys file. Just make sure that when you do that, you give the authorized key file um, permissions of 600. Okay, so that would be, it would look something like this. So uh, change mod uh, 600 authorized keys. You would need to do that if you make this file manually. Okay. But that's all there is to it. So now, if we, we might have to log out and log back in, uh, we'll just go ahead and close this window. Back to my main VS Code window, we will say connect to host. And since we saved this, this host previously, we can just select it. It'll connect for us. And you might have noticed it didn't prompt us for a password at all, even though the first time when we logged in, it did prompt us for a password. So now we can test it out again. We'll open folder. We'll just go ahead and open the roots home folder. And we do have to say we trust the authors, but we don't have to enter our password anymore because our public keys in the authorized keys file on that remote VM. So um, that's really all there is to it. Uh, again, this is just a, a handy SSH client for VS Code. You know, after you log in, you can open any folders you need. Um, you don't. Have you know, in using this, if I edit a file, I can just edit it in VS Code. I don't have to use a command line uh, text editor anymore. I can just do it via VS Code, which is really nice. And again, you have the full functionality. So if you want to install extensions, you can. Um, so definitely recommend this for any development tasks. Uh, but with that said, that's all I got for this video. So I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a good one.